Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're having a really, really good day. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up a green screen for your stream, how to chroma key out. I'm also going to give you some tips on how to use the green screen, some different applications that you can use, and ultimately how you can get the best from your green screen experience, or more to the point, how we can give your viewers that experience. So in this video, what you can expect to see is a tutorial of how you can set this up in Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the quality differences between different green screens as well, because there's quite a few interesting talking points there as well. So first of all, what is a green screen? Well, it is literally a green screen. It can be a professional green screen, it can be floor to ceiling, a piece of fabric that you call a green screen and everything in between. Sometimes you can have whole rooms that are painted green and are used as a green screen. It could be on the floor, ceiling, everything. Or it could just be a pull down or a pull up device and you can pack it away and pack it down. I've seen some people use a green screen mesh around their chair so it can just purely green screen out like the camera and nothing else. And I've seen other people use full on streaming scenes to really enhance the experience and almost create storylines as part of their stream. And of course, from that point forward, it becomes more of a creative process rather than a technical process. How do green screens work? Well, what green screen do and the same for blue screens and the others that you can get they give the background a consistent color so that a piece of software can then basically find that color a consistent color and delete the color and create like an alpha channel instead of color that's there so they literally work by finding pixels that look like a green screen and deleting those pixels and showing a transparency or the alpha channel which then means in place of the green screen you can show videos or images or whatever else or for you it might be your gameplay i've seen green screens put into great capacity dr disrespects like the archetypal user of green screen he uses so many different scenes and they could be scenes where he's really really small on screen Screen, but uses them in such great capacity and creates storylines around his green screen. One of my good streamer friends is a guy named Ryan Raving, and he actually throws a rave with his viewers via the use of a green screen. And it's absolutely awesome, the effects he puts into play. I'll drop his link in the description. You should check him out, give him a cheeky follow. The green screens are pretty awesome. I've personally not used green screens a lot on my stream. I'm gonna talk a little bit now about sort of the quality differences. You can literally get a green piece of fabric, iron it out and stretch it out in the background and that will work as a green screen. But the difference between a good quality and a bad quality green screen is a number of factors. For example, having very, very good lighting, very few creases, and a very consistent color and of course no blemishes and things like that on the green screen too and I'll demonstrate some of these things later in the video and show you exactly how that actually makes a difference to the quality of what people see on your stream within OBS studio or Streamlabs OBS so how much are green screens they can literally be a few dollars if you buy some green fabric and do the right thing with it. Problem is, there's a little bit more to it. You want to be making sure that it's properly lit. You want to make sure that it's stretched out, that there are no creases in there. It's not moving around. There are no blemishes on it. And for that reason, some people do tend to buy one. Me personally, I've bought the Elgato green screen, and this is a something like a two meter wide by two meter tall green screen. I've opted for this one because it does pull out the creases. I've noticed the quality of my green screen is very, very good in comparison to many of the green screens that I've seen. I will drop an Amazon US and an Amazon EU green screen link below if you want to buy one from Amazon and support the channel. But if you combine a really good quality green screen with a good mirrorless or DLSR camera, you're really quite well set. Are green screens even popular? I was interested to find this out. So I did a poll on Twitter and the results were quite interesting. The overwhelming majority of people actually prefer to not see green screen streams. So at this point, I'm going to switch over the recording to Streamlabs OBS and show my OBS studio scenes. And this will enable me to show you how you can set a green screen up. And of course, how some of the effects like lighting and creasing can have on the green screen. First of all, I'm going to go into the scene collections here and I'm going to set up another scene, green screen test. So before we drop into that scene and add the green screen and the scene and start building it, I want to just talk a little bit about source mirror. Now, if you're using OBS Studio, you can get plugins. There is a plugin source mirror, and I think it's through Stream FX. I'll link it in the description. What this does is it allows you to take a source take a copy of it, meaning you can make edits and changes to that copy without affecting the original. Which then means you can place that new source onto a new scene and not affect any of your other scenes. Why is that important? Well, if you've got a camera that you want to use as non-green screen, you don't want to set up a completely another camera for your green screen. You may want to use the same camera and using source mirror will allow you to use that same camera twice 
for different purposes. The thing just to bear in mind here is that if you do change the original source, that will be reflected in the source mirror. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a source mirror here, and I'll show you exactly how it works. So we'll jump into the scene. I'm going to add a new source mirror. I'm going to name this green screen test. And what I'm going to do from this list is select the source that I want, which is the camera. Now, at this point, all it's doing is taking a copy of my Sony A5100. Link in the description if you want to buy one of those and support me. So if I make any changes to this, for example, adding a chroma key, it will not affect camera in other areas. So we now have the source mirror. All I'm going to do with this now, and this is a native part of both Streamlabs OBS, OBS Studio, and most of the other broadcasting software. I'm going to add a filter to this by right-clicking now, bear in mind, this isn't the original camera scene. It's a copy of it. I'm going to now add an effect filter called a chroma key. Now, by default, I've not done anything here. And I'm even to prove that I'm going to click on the default tab here. These are all the default settings. Within OBS Studio, it's already picked up my green screen. Now, just go through some of those settings now. But essentially, if you've got a good quality green screen and you add that chroma key default setting there, it will chrome out most of the green. And there's a few things we can do just to make the best of that. And I'll show you how we can add backgrounds and videos too. So first of all, within here, we can set whether or not we want it to be a green, blue, magenta, or custom color chroma key. And all we're doing here is choosing the actual pixel colors, tune out, and turn into alpha channel. So we're going to leave it with green for now. And what we then can do here is choose similarity, smoothness, and some key spill reduction. And all this does is just tweak how much or little of the pixels are chosen, how much sort of tolerance you get from that. For example, slight mist tones of green. And also, you can see on my green screen, if I just turn off this chroma key here, you can see the shading over this side is slightly darker, over this side is slightly lighter. And that's just simply the effect of lighting on my green screen. But for you, it could easily potentially be like a blemish something like that. So I'm just going to turn up the similarity on the chroma key just to show you what some of these effects have. As you can see, do sometimes get people where their green screens look a little bit like this. It's normally effect either on their settings being incorrect or the green screen itself not being in great condition. You can always click default here and it'll reset them back to the original or just remember what the original default number was before you change those settings. Now what you'll notice with the green screens, you can see a slight tinge of my head just here and also a little bit on the on the chair behind me you can see kind of a little bit of pixelation you can actually take some of that out by making micro adjustments to similarity and the smoothness so you see here i've actually increased it and it's made the chair a lot worse what that will have done is for it would have accounted for lighting on the green screen which i'll show you in a second so once you've tweaked around with these settings including the brightness and the contrast and things like that you can hit close on this and this will act as a green screen now it doesn't look like it because it's black but it's only because we don't have an image or a video in the background so i'm going to go ahead here and click on sources i'm going to add an image i'm going to just reorder this to the lower section here which will put it behind me now, as you can see this seems to be working pretty well but again it's partly because i've got a pretty good quality green screen and again link in the description if you want to purchase that however if i just reduce this down i'm going to just show you a few little bits and tips so now first of all you'll see in this section here there's a slight shading difference and this is a really common thing with green screens it's to my right here it's a slightly different contrast of colors and what i'm going to do here is just illustrate that this is actually a lighting issue so if i turn my torch on here and just light the green screen behind me see that some of that will disappear the bottom there and at the top and as soon as i take the torch away see the lighting goes slightly darker again however you can get rid of some of this using the chroma key setting so we just jump back into the right click and filters here click on the chroma key and remember here the objective is to try and reduce the darkness between the two if i just change this here to about 420 no jokes please uh, and i think it's something like eight, if you just tweak the smoothness up a little bit for example 84 straight away you can see that's made a little bit of a difference to the quality of the green screen without me having to change the lighting see that's smoother now and also as a byproduct of this if i just make this scene bigger you can see there's a little bit of tearing on the chair behind me as well so you've got to get the middle ground and trade-off between do you want the tearing on the actual image itself or do you want the shading to be perfect in the background or even just make the difference here by 
lighting your green screen to a really good effect. So I'm pretty happy with the green screen, but what I'm also finding here is on the right hand side here, the green screen's actually cutting out. Well, I could position the green screen differently. That's not going to help me because mine's actually hanging from the wall. I could even change the camera angle, which will maybe tear out some of that, but then I might have problems on the other side. So what I'm going to just do is I'm going to click on the green screen. I'm going to hold out on my keyboard. I'm going to crop out this side here. That little thing there that I just did has cropped out the edge of the green screen. Remember as well, you can also, depending on the type of camera you've got, actually just simply zoom in or out. Now, the other thing to bear in mind here in terms of tips is the higher quality your camera, the better quality pixels green screen has got to actually work with, as well as OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. So these are all things that you do need to take into account. So in summary, to get a really good green screen, ideally a good quality green screen itself, although obviously budgets may restrict that for you. Good light Lighting will always help reduce the creasing and tearing as much as possible and any blemishes on the green screen. Obviously, having a better quality camera will help. The more pixels that are available to chroma key out, the smaller any blemishes are going to look on your green screen. And wherever else you can't fix it, you can then tweak around with those chroma key settings. Other cool things to bear in mind here, your placement in relation to the lighting sources in your room are quite important too. I happen to have key light airs either side of me, so I'm getting quite a lot of lighting. That will just disturb some of the lighting behind me. So one thing I'm going to do when I use my green screen is have a third light that will light the green screen itself. And that could just be something simple like a lamp or it could be another key light. Microphone placement can be quite important here. I've got the microphone right next to me and it kind of looks a little bit weird. The thing is for certain games being in the bottom right hand corner makes more of a difference to not block key gaming content than say for example, if I was to move myself over to the left course the microphone placement is better here so these are all things you need to bear in mind and you really need to look through this through the eyes of your viewer and not through sort of your own eyes if that makes sense so there you have it, how you can easily set up a green screen for your stream, including not disturbing existing camera sources that you've got and a wide variety of tips. If you found this useful, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and you know what? Have a great day.